What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the most important NYCFC talk show. You're hanging with the dudes in blue. It's episode 104. It's Monday night, May 21st. Hope you guys are doing awesome. I'm your host, Joe Amato. Alongside me over this way is uh, is Antonino. And over on the other side, we got Anthony Merced, the Dudes in Blue contributor extraordinaire. What's up, boys? Not much. Doing great. Good Monday. It's, it's not raining. It's not <laughs> It's not raining. No, it is not. Uh, thanks so much for, for coming on, uh, Anthony. You've been doing some really awesome work for us. So really excited to get your input on some things, NYCFC related, especially what's going on lately. Um, so uh, make sure as you guys are coming in, let us know where you're coming from. Start throwing up those comments. we got a lot to cover tonight. We're going to talk about the Colorado match from this past weekend. The very wet and sloppy uh, match from NYCFC. We're also going to talk about Patrick Vieira's potential move to Nice. Yeah. Uh. Not Nice. <laughs> Real quick, saying hi to Andre, saying hi to Daniel, Kerry, Amanda, Jorge, Jason. You're all coming in, coming in hot. Hope you, hope you guys are all doing really well. Thanks so much for uh, for stopping by. Okay. Let's lay some let's lay some ground rules down. Merced, you're Anthony. Dude, okay. you're dude. Got it. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> that's that's pretty much th- those are the only ground rules. Everything else is fair game. Oh, and if there's a ridiculous amount of echo on my voice tonight, it's because I'm in a brand new office that has literally nothing in it. So you're welcome for that. Sorry about your ears, folks. Anyway. Where do we want to begin? Let's 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 save the rant because that I know is coming from you, Anthony, for later on uh, regarding the Patrick Vieira move. But let's talk about NYCFC versus Colorado. They spanked Colorado at home, just like they did last time at home, four nil in a sopping wet Yankee Stadium. Dude, good game. Yeah, um, a lot of fun to watch. Not crazy fun to be at. Um, I would prefer a little bit of a drier scenario to be playing in. But again, uh, uh, against the team at the bottom of the table, coming away with the points the way you're supposed to, uh, it's it's by the book. It, it's what needed to be done. Um, I thought the change of formation was interesting. I thought the personnel chosen to fill in that formation was interesting. Uh, the result was fantastic. And uh, now I'm just... Uh, I'm just concerned as to is that lineup specifically formulated for teams like Colorado that aren't going to do anything against us, or is that a valuable option against a team that might actually play, you know, when the game starts? Yeah, no, for sure. So so we're going to get into a little bit more details there, but Anthony, I want to shoot over to you a second. Was the result – this was a, a, a an obliteration of Tim Howard specifically at Yankee Stadium, and, and Daniel is asking – how much do you guys think Tim Howard hates Yankee Stadium? I think pretty much. Um, he didn't move once. Not once did he move. <laughs> well, that's it. You know, he just kind of hung out. He was like, "Yeah, eh, all right, whatever." That's right. He didn't wear his baseball cleats. <laughs> <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's really really funny. Oh, also, we got Mark Fratto coming in here, the voice of Yankees Stadium, NYCFC. Uh, saying hi. He says he saw Anthony outside three hours before kickoff talking to an already soaked Patrick Vieira. So, dude, you had a Mark Fratto <laughs> sighting, apparently. I did. It was awesome. My first encounter with Mark uh, in, in real life, not in the uh, virtual reality realm that there, we live in. Yeah, there you go. So, Anthony, back to the question that I've been trying to get to for the past couple minutes, but your <laughs> comments are so riveting. How much of this result was NYCFC and how much of this result was Colorado? Uh, it was NYCFC. I, 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 you, you can't downplay um, a team in this league, specifically in MLS, mainly because we see so many teams play up to their competition in this league, especially on the road this year in particular. Nothing makes sense, i.e. New York Red Bulls versus Atlanta this weekend. Um, but there's – so you have to say that Colorado um, still posed a threat. Their record is atrocious. They don't look good moving forward. But NYCFC still had to show up, and they still had to play this game their way, and they did. If this was a one nothing game that they kind of 
muddled through. We'd be sitting here thinking, well, they really didn't play that well. But no, they took advantage of their opportunities. Bia did what he's supposed to do. Everyone moved the ball the way they were supposed to do. So it's definitely an NYCFC thing more so than uh, Colorado just being a really poor team. That's really interesting. I didn't think I really didn't think you were going to take that that angle. I'm kind of I'm I'm proud of you. Oh wait, do you want me to do you want me to do, do we want to cut and I can do the uh the the, the bad guy version? No. Nah, it's just that's, it's just Colorado. That's, <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, so you were talking about the formation. So Patrick Vieira goes 3 in the back. He essentially had uh Collins ring essentially and uh and Sebastian Ibiaga uh, still, Maxime Cheneau not uh, not you know not doing well apparently. So we're we're not really sure um, what's happening there. I don't I don't really have any details on that. But three in the back, really overloaded midfield. Had some uh, attacking attacking prowess from Ronald Madarita. You had um, I'm totally spacing out right now. But you had some attacking options on the wings. Our midfield was clogged. You had a Fori. You had Herrera. You had Maxi. And then you had Burgett uh, via. And Shradi. Yeah, very, very interesting. Uh, reading the the, the 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 lineup sheet that comes Who out, you're not sure. First. What's up? Who was playing right wing back? No one. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead, dude. Because I, I just had a brain fart for a second. Thanks. No, when you read the lineup sheet, you're you're not. They don't pose it in a formation to you. They just, you know, you read it and you have to assume the left to right or right to left what's going on. So when you first look at it, you're like, oh, Herrera's playing right back. That's interesting. And then you look at the field and you're like, oh, I see what he did there. So uh, putting Ring in that central defensive spot when you're playing with three central defenders um, was interesting because you give him a little bit of freedom to move a little bit more forward. Um, Callens had crazy amount of freedom moving forward. They didn't touch him the entire game. Uh, he was box to box more than anyone I've ever seen. Um, you you had your your wing backs kind of you had Madarita and Tajuri, kind of like uh, being able to play forward and backward at the same time. They were able to come back on D when needed, but most of the time they spent in the middle of the field, which was nice. You had all your midfielders on the field at one point in time, which was a little crazy. And then you had Burgett and Villa up top. So it's a weird little formation. Like you can call it a bunch of different things, but I, I think it's like a, a a three. What would it be? At the top, you've got like a, a two, really, with Burgett and Via. You, you don't have like three guys up top. It's it wasn't like Burgett and yeah, Via. Five two Trotty. essentially is what I thought. So so it was it was interesting, and I think the way everybody played their role, it allowed Via and Burgett to kind of play off of each other and allow Via to create well just to have so much space to be able to do whatever he wanted. I mean, he was playing left, he was playing center, he was playing a little bit on the right, and he was just creating all kinds of havoc up front for a majority of the match. So, Anthony, do you think this is a good lineup for NYCFC going forward? Or, I'm sorry, formation, rather, going forward? Or was this a Colorado-specific lineup, going back to Anthony, to dude's question? (laughs) I almost broke my own rule from before. Uh, it, it's got to be situational. You can't run this lineup out against very many teams. Colorado doesn't have many options moving forward. They don't really have much creativity in their midfield. So it's okay because you're trying to press the game. You're trying to get a win at home. You're you're forcing play. I would not do this against Kansas City. I would not do this against um, any team above a red line in the Eastern Conference. This would definitely not work against Orlando City. Please don't do this in two weeks against Orlando City. And it won't work against Houston. So there, it, it's going to be situational. The one good thing about this is we've seen the rigidity, that's the Jeopardy word of the day, um, go away from Patrick Vieira. The fact that he was able to do this and make such a massive change and, 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 and make changes in the middle of the game is a lot of progress for him as a head coach where he would have lived and died by that solid formation for, for the entire 90 minutes if necessary. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, Franco's coming in, our good old Franco there. I don't know if it was because of Colorado, but the way they had everyone played position-wise created so much space. He talked a little bit about Collins, dude, getting all the way forward. Funny story about Collins, and dude, I don't think I told you this. And Anthony, you weren't there uh, Saturday night. So in the locker room, they were busting on Alex Collins, 
and somebody might have posted a picture of it. Might have been Trey from Blue Balls. They drew. I, f- I forget who it was. It was who's the who's the blonde Christian coach? What's his last name? The, you know what it is I'm talking about. I should know this. Yes, I should know this. Why would I know his last name? It's not. It's not Latanzio. It's the other Christian. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. He was hysterical. He drew a big arrow. This was Collins. But drew a big arrow going up, and then he wrote, gave away the ball, and then an arrow going back. <laughs> so ben Sweat walks in, and he was like, yeah, what the heck was up with that? Collins is going all the way up the line, getting all this space, and then he's going, well, what do I do? What do I do? <laughs> and then he gave the ball away and ran all the way back. It was hysterical. I wish I took a picture of somebody did. I think it's it's got to be on Twitter somewhere, but it was really, really funny. But, yeah. They allotted so much space for our center backs to get forward that it was just it was just inevitable that we were going to create the amount of opportunities that we did. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, yeah and and I go back to it that that doesn't work against any team that can hurt you moving forward. Um, this will work against Minnesota, and 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 I think that they I think that they should change the lineup uh, and not just formation wise, but perhaps uh, personnel wise, depending on the team that they play. I don't necessarily know. If Ebenezer Ofori is a great idea against Houston, um, you know, Tajiri Shadi may need to be the second striker if they want to do two strikers. Um, things like that that Vieira should play with uh, for the rest of the year to keep other teams off balance, but take advantage of the uniqueness that a lot of the new players have this season. Uh, Christian on Facebook is saying, we need to play that formation against the Red Bulls. I'm going to just let that oh. go first. No. <laughs> No, that that will not work against the Red Bulls. They 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 will just hit you in the wings um, and take advantage of the fact that everybody's pushed forward way too high. Yeah, their midfield is going to overload our three uh, center backs. There is no way we'll be able to sustain that kind of pressure, especially somebody like Alex Ring. It's not going to happen. Mark 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 is saying no. Big exclamation point. That's pretty funny. Um, so. Where do we where do we want to go here? Because there were so many chances created, there were so many opportunities for us to score. Patrick Vieira, and you talked about this in, in a little bit in your in your article, Anthony, is that he wasn't terribly quite really pleased with the first half of play. Why do you think that was? I because they didn't show much, to be quite honest. Um, they they moved the ball well, and, but they were still in that mindset. And I and I guess he just doesn't want to say it to the media, but. The, the team is in the mindset of get the ball to Villa at all times and let Villa be the one that, that creates these opportunities. Uh, early in the game, they didn't do that. And Jadri got the, got the ball and had a really great shot that Tim Howard came up big on. Yeah. Uh, that would have been an amazing goal. But aside from that, the rest of the game was we're looking for Villa. Like, Brigitte, as, as good as he's been, I don't believe he was brought here to be a, to be a hold-up kind of guy. They were looking for him to score some goals. And he's constantly with his back to the goal, looking for Villa, looking for another guy to kind of give the ball off to. All of that changed in the second half when you saw guys get forward a little bit and be a little bit more uh, creative. Matarita being where he needed to be to score that goal. So that, I believe, was the attitude that he was referring to because it, it does get very frustrating in this team when they rely so much on, uh, on David Villa. Yeah, and you saw that a couple times where, like, I forget if it was um... – I don't know if it was Shradi, but somebody else had a clear opportunity on goal. It might have been even – no, it was in the first half. I don't remember who it was, but clearly looking for that David Villa outlet, afraid to kind of take the shot, and uh, and then uh, you know didn't really lead to anything. And then, yeah, second half comes in. Everybody's scoring goals at this point. You know what I mean? It's just uh, – yeah. Andres is saying Ant, uh, <laughs> and stifling that yawn was way too funny. <laughs> <laughs> We're exhausted. Anthony and I, dude and I, damn it, I keep breaking my own rule. Dude and I played in uh, in a golf outing today. We literally got home probably 20 minutes before the show was supposed to start. We're pretty tired. But anyway. Um, this is how we went. We always, rep- everywhere we go, literally. This is no, everywhere this is the we exact go. outfit. This is the exact outfit. Um, and Christian is saying it was Tajori, speaking of my, uh, of my little play there. But... Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about about uh, Birgit because he's been the subject to a little bit of uh, of criticism of late scrutiny by us Scru- and um, and the Cooligans last week. Alexis was hating on Birgit like it was his job. Um, 
I think this game we saw his hold up a little bit better. We saw him definitely a little bit more involved. I thought this was kind of a better game for him. Probably should have put away that goal on Tim Howard. I feel like he needs to he needs to put his boot his boot through more of those shots, dude. Right? I mean, yes and no. In that situation, he nutmegs a guy to get through. He actually found a little bit of speed, which it didn't look like he had the first couple of games. Uh, he was actually turning it on. Uh, at that point in time, you really don't have much of an angle, so it's hard to get your foot through with something like that. I would like to see him shoot more from when he has a little bit of space and maybe try it that way instead of having to be right in front of the net to get it in. But all in all, I mean, you got to look at how much ground this guy this guy covers. This guy was all over the field the entire game. It was unbelievable. And then slowly and surely, as he's playing with Villa, their, their link-up play is getting better and better and stronger and stronger. And those no-look passes all of a sudden are, are hitting who they're supposed to because you've, you've gone in sync with, with your, your counterpart there. And it looks really great. And honestly, if you're not going to be able to score a goal, I, you you got to do that. That's what you have to do. Yeah. And you have to do it to the nth degree every single time. Otherwise, you're not going to find yourself playing there. Uh, Marg is saying, the Viking hustled harder this week. He must have heard the sharp tongue of Alexis Guerreros. That could very well be. Uh, Eric is it's saying awesome. he found how uh, he found how to play aggressive and fast. I think a little bit more. Christian coming in with the massive comment: "It's the okay. socks, dude. <laughs> it's not the socks." I'm just letting it go. <laughs> well, there, there is something to be said, though. You know, when everybody talks about uh, the quickness of the, of this game, um, and you know, we all like to ignore the fact that it's a baseball field, but that field is cut for the outfield in baseball. And when it gets very, very wet, the ball pretty much like hydroplanes on that field. So the ball moved incredibly quicker than normal. So much fun to watch. Um, it, it's unfortunate because I think if they had their own stadium, they, it, it, it would they would want to keep the grass at length with the ball moved that way. Unfortunately, during a drier game, that ball dies. And so you don't quite see that movement the same way. Maybe this is what we want, what what – Brigitte is supposed to be doing when he's playing on a, on a soccer field that's uh, that, on a grass pitch is being mowed for that kind of a game. But uh, this is probably the closest that we've seen him to playing on the type of surface that he should be playing on normally. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's oh, a yeah. uh, interesting point. Uh, before a comment came in, I'm not sure it was. It might have been uh, might have been Mark, but both Villa and Matarita named to MLS Team of the Week, so we have to. Um, Give kudos to both of those guys. Let's uh, let's get into the goals a little bit here because there was no shortage of them. David Villa, uh, you know he's going to bury that opportunity when Tim Howard plays a, ball, a a poor ball out of the out of the back and Maxi just gets it. You know, Berget. I think Berget thought he was offside. That's why he kind of put his hands up in the air. But Villa one on one with Tim Howard, it's not going to end well for Tim Howard. He was that was one of the dumbest things I've ever seen Tim Howard do. Like and and he even he knew it. He knew it the minute he did it. He yeah. he he had a look on his face like why did I just do that? Uh, but it was it just it 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 punctuated his day. That that was his day. It was it was every bit of a mistake that Tim Howard made in so many different plays in this game. That was the most egregious one. I mean, but you you just can't dump a ball like that right into um, a midfield that's already overloaded. Yeah, that's just that's just uh, uh, a a guy like David Villa taking advantage of an opportunity that was literally gifted to him. I think if he didn't put that chance away, there would be something wrong there. Uh, but of course, David Villa has to pick up a brace on David Villa day, dude. You couldn't have asked for anything better there. I got an idea. Uh -oh. So Frank Lampard killed it on Frank Lampard day with two goals. With two goals, David Villa. Killed it on David Villa Day. Every single person needs to get a day for the rest of the year. <laughs> I'd be really interested in Sean Johnson Day because that would be something. That would be turned. You, you could, everybody gets a day. doesn't make a difference who it is. Call the mayor. Get him up here. Let's go. Everyone gets a day. That's really, really funny. Um, but, yeah, didn't Tim ha – now, um, I'm sorry. Fra Frank Lampard scored two goals on Lampard Day. I want to say it was against D.C. United at home. Where yeah, he, he scored from the late behind winner. Yeah, and won the game like at the last dying minutes of the game on Frank. Yeah, Lampard that was day. like they were they. That was the one where we took the lead and then they took it back and then we ended up winning the game. It was uh, 
Probably one of the more intense games we've ever been to. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Um, Moderita's goal. Right place, right time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, again, seizing the opportunity. That ball could not have fallen to him any better than it did for him to just hit it into an empty net with his head. Like, that's – that's. but again – He got up there. He got up there, too. That was quite the jump. Yeah. He did. He's got hops. Very athletic. Very athletic. Question: Was that the one? Um, these are all getting mixed up now. That wasn't the one that Burgett hit, correct? Yeah, it was. Was it the goal that Burgett yeah, shot? Yeah, that was the one. Burgett, Burgett, not making the guy, got in. The shot was deflected, came back, and Moderita headed it in. There you and go. And Tim Howard waved at it. Tim Howard was like, "Hi, <laughs> bye." <laughs> I just I've never seen such lack of effort from anyone in my life. It was oh, just ridiculous. Oh, listen, moving right along to Maxie's goal, Tim Howard didn't even move on that one. Yeah, yeah, but that, but he was rooted to the spot for that one. That 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 was one of those where you're you're not going to get it. it. It curved just the right way. Um, it looks bad. Uh, I have seen a lot of goals in soccer where you kind of like the guy didn't even move, but that one in particular, there was nothing he yeah. was going to do. Well, I think he was yeah. he was more prepared for David Villa taking the shot. Than anything else, you know, because that ball just yeah. kind of fell to to Maxi because of uh, the tackle that was made on to on to Via. Amanda is saying she was happy to see Mata get a goal again. I still have not touched my cursed jersey. Well, please don't. Whatever you do, whatever you're doing is working. Uh, it was nice before get, the World Cup. <laughs> what What do you think that does for a guy like that for, for his confidence going into now the, the World Cup? Right, like this is that's massive for him. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I mean, it's everything to him. Um, you know, he's he's going to have one of the most important years of his career, uh, uh, important months of his career. Right. You know, if, if he does if he does amazingly well there, he's setting himself up to be a permanent starter with this team. Or unfortunately, which we'll talk about later, he he may be setting himself up to go to Europe. Uh, so th- this is the time. There's so many specifically non-U.S. because U.S. is in it. Concacaf teams that have players on it that are that are MLS guys that are looking to make their names in, in this competition. Matarita is got to be the top five, that one of the top five guys that everyone's going to be looking for to make something happen. Yeah, very, very true. Um, Christian is saying Rodney is going too. Yeah, but that one doesn't nearly impress me as much as Matarita. Um, but Rodney's a bench guy. Yeah, and left back is such a, such a hard spot to fill. Uh, everywhere you go, it, it, you very rarely do you see a superstar player at a left back position. I mean, you have your Marcelos and your 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 Alexandros, but other than that, it, it's really it's really difficult. That's not easy to fill and fill well. And if he could shine in the World Cup, he may find himself, you know, amongst those guys. Um, Henry on Facebook is asking, why did Vieira shake his head after Moderita's goal? Probably because Berger should have put it in. <laughs> I I think he, yeah he probably thought that Machariza wasn't in the position that he wanted him to be in um that he was a little too advanced because that ball goes over his head and perhaps that's that's going back the other way for something a bit dangerous um so he's probably thinking of it from a perspective of okay you scored a goal but don't ever do that again I think Thierry Henry on Sky Sports a few years ago told this great story about how Pep Guardiola benched him after he moved out of position to um to get a goal to to get a goal and then instantly said that's not what I want you to do and sat him down so it's 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 one of those deals where you know you you got to keep it great it worked but what what if it didn't yeah, yeah he was no, actually so sure. far Jonathan away from saying the net he was on just that shaking shot. off the rain he was yeah. he was it looked like he was out of range and I'm I'm thinking maybe Vieira's like hey you got to settle that ball down and try to bring it a little closer. Um, but I, again, I don't, none of us are ever going to know what what he thought about it. But uh, listen, it went in, and that's that's the way it goes. Yeah, I mean, look, there, there's no question this team dominated Colorado. Uh, I, I it was really funny, and I don't know if I included it in the 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 view from the blue yeah. vlog. I can't say that view from the yeah, blue vlog. Right, that's very difficult to say. That as a vocal warm up. I don't know where Merced went. He. <laughs> oh, sorry about oh, that. There he is. <laughs> um, here was this was funny. 
while I was walking into the stadium, I said on camera, I was like, here we are, it's David Villa Day. Let's hope he gets a couple of goals. And damn it, he did it. He should have said three. I should have said three. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) That's right. That's right. Go big or go home. So um, not not to kind of deter from from the match here, uh, I, I guess it's involved in the match. Anthony posted an article uh, last week. Where in the world is Tommy McNamara? And we saw the return of the Mac. And I was I was a little sad. I was a little bit sad because you could tell Patrick just said, "Go on there, just go out there and keep everybody back, <laughs> including no. yourself." Here's an opportunity for him to go against Tim Howard again at Yankee Stadium. I wanted him to score that fifth goal so, so bad. Can we agree on that? Like, maybe? That poor guy. (laughs) What does he got to do? Like, what does he have to do? Did he show up late to a meeting or something? That's that's, that's a Jonathan Lewis thing, and he has not been seen since. Uh Um. Vieira's big on his meetings. He is. Uh, no, I will tell you this, though. Jonathan Lewis was in the locker room on Saturday night, uh, not dressed in anything NYCFC-related because they probably took away all his jerseys. <laughs> but um, but rest assured, he was there, he was alive, and he was clearly breathing. Just, I just want to let everybody know that he is, uh, in fact, alive. I know that was a big, big discussion. But anyway, yeah, Tommy McNamara comes on really just to shut things down. I, I, I don't think there was anything else other than that. He comes on, earns a yellow card, and oddly enough, another Tommy gets a yellow card a couple minutes after him in Colorado, which is uh, – it was the, the, the yellow card Tommy day. Yeah. the uh, t- Tommy McNamara, I think, in this next transfer window has – for MLS transfer window, has to be trade bait for something that the team needs. Um, you know, extra defensive help, maybe some wing backs. He needs to go to a place where he can start or at least get more minutes – uh, and, and he's a good player. So, you know, you have to strike while the iron's hot with guys like this. They're, they're good commodities that you can move to a team, maybe for someone on, I don't know, I'm thinking maybe Columbus or, or something like that to, to get a piece that to fill this puzzle, especially as we get ready for the U.S. Open Cup. Uh, because he doesn't seem like he's just like in the cards. Yellow, guys. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, maybe, maybe, or, or, you stop playing Young Hill Herrera. Yeah, it's not going to happen. <laughs> Come on. It's man. not going to happen. I just want it to happen. Oh, by the way, by the way, I will say this. Henry just made a comment. Yay, blue Gatorade this time. You all happy now? Are you all happy because you busted on me for drinking red Gatorade last week or two weeks ago and I was sick as a dog? I got blue one this time just for you people. All right? So there you go. Does that mean Gatorade you have to drink blue. Pepsi instead of Coke now? What's that? Does that mean you have to drink Pepsi instead of Coke now? Okay. Now, we're not going to get into this discussion too heavily <laughs> because there is under no circumstance where I will drink Pepsi over Coke. Coke is my soft drink yes! of choice. Dude, where do you weigh in on this conversation? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I couldn't have – like that was totally unplanned, people. Totally unplanned. Very, very good. Very, very good. Uh, hey, listen, you mentioned uh, U.S. Open Cup. Stephen Parks Bell is saying, you think City can beat the Cosmos this year? I don't know if – I think a budget can beat the Cosmos this year. It's, the, the only way you can beat the Cosmos is if they have a time machine because they've already been eliminated from the U.S. Open Cup. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by, uh, by a pub team, right, or something like that. Like, No, no, no. It wasn't a pub team. It was the Brooklyn Italians. They're, they right, are a, right. a classic I'm MTS upside, yeah. If there are any Brooklyn Italians in this broadcast right now, I apologize. <laughs> um, yeah, here's – so U.S. Open Cup, when does that schedule come out? Uh, we should be seeing it. They're playing games right now. Um, they, well, no, we should MLS be seeing size. MLS teams uh, either tomorrow – anywhere between tomorrow and Thursday as to what the combinations would be. Gotcha. Okay. Excellent. Do you think Vieira takes this a little bit seriously? You know, again, granted, if he's still here. I mean, look, it's – I find it hard to take this tournament seriously, period. Um, it's 
cup competitions around the world are diminishing in value. There's, I can't tell There's you how so many articles many I've read about them. how unimportant the FA Cup was between Manchester United and Chelsea. Um, it's all about leagues now, so you really have to be very careful. Uh, don't sacrifice league wins for cup games, especially ones that aren't even on television. Don't sacrifice league win? <laughs> well, I mean, I guess LAFC could sacrifice league win. <laughs> Uh, we had a whole episode about that. I think we even like called the episode something like that. I don't know. Another league win for NYCFC or something. I don't know. Whatever the hell that was. <laughs> anyway, before we get on to the Patrick Vieira discussion, I know that's what you've all been waiting for ever so patiently, and we appreciate you for it. Who uh, Mark Frado says, good job, other Anthony. That's, <laughs> that's really funny. <laughs> like, really? We get, we get one writer, and his name has to be Anthony. Like, <laughs> it's like... It's well, not it our fault that – His yeah. name could be Dude. If his name was Dude, we'd be screwed. It would be over. It would be absolutely <laughs> over. Unbelievable. It's not our fault that so many parents in the 80s decided to go with Anthony as a name. It's a great yeah, name. Oh, my God. It's an awesome Terrible. name. Terrible. Listen, I want you guys to start throwing in your votes for Dude of the Match. It's that time of the episode. Due to the match, NYCFC against Colorado. I, pr- I don't think there's going to be really any question as to who's going to grab this one. But <laughs> – but throw it in there. Who is it? Is it David Villa? Is it uh, is it Matarita? Is it Maxi Morales? Who is it? Start throwing up those comments and let us know who you think. I think for us, guys, I think it's a pretty clear choice here. But unless the unless the fans have something else to say, of course. But David Villa, you know, picking up, <laughs> picking up the game-winning goal, the brace on David Villa day. I mean – he does what he does, and he did it. Like, what else do you want from the guy? But do I get to rant about David Villa Day? <laughs> oh, jeez. Keep those comments coming. I, let's let's start losing some followers. Go ahead, Anthony. Let's talk oh, about here we David go. Villa Day. So I've got no problem with the ceremony on the pitch. I've got no problem with David Villa Day, with everything. I am a diehard Yankees fan. And for a guy who has not brought a title here, you do not spray paint his face next to the great Mariano Rivera. <laughs> they do not sit on the same level. Like, they, they just, like, you don't do that. I, my blood boiled when I saw that. Maybe one day if Bia brings a championship to NYCFC, that's cool. But right now, a majority of his accomplishments are not here. They are elsewhere. So, be re- it's like, you cannot put that man next to the likes of Derek Jeter or or Mariano Rivera, guys who dedicated their entire careers to that one team and won so many, so many championships. My head nearly exploded. He deserves all the love for 400 goals. Guy's amazing. He's one of the top 15, t- top 10 actually, current players of the past 15, 20 years. But he has not done it to that level here, especially in the playoffs where a guy like Mariano Rivera is one of the greatest of all time. Interesting. Yeah, you know Mark what, though? Not gonna, saying, there's also not going to be Yankees another fan. Yankee up on that wall. And I'm good with it. Aaron Judge? <laughs> yeah, I don't, not even. I don't think I don't think you're going to end up seeing the that Jeter caliber quality. A lot of these guys, the, the, the loyalty is not where it was back in the day. Everybody likes to go around and play with different teams. You can see it in every league, you know, at this point in time. But again, Jorge uh, is saying the team is only five years old. Uh, today, actually, happy birthday, NYCFC. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. But um, it's again, it's it's nice to do something for the soccer community and, and be included. Do you go that far? Yeah, I mean, yes and no. I could see where you could be upset with it, but for me, I think it's kind of cool that they have it up there. Maybe not next to Mariano Rivera, but uh, <laughs> you know. It's, Mark, it, it Mark is what is it is. Asking, it's, it's still pretty cool. Was, it's going to bring people in. Mark is asking, what was the match where we went down a man in the first eight minutes? His effort that day was one of his first Yankee-level captain moments. That was the Chicago Fire match last season. Chicago Fire game, yep. Yeah, I'll um, give him that. Where he literally he literally uh, carried the team on his back. Um, but then he has moments like he has disappearing acts, like in the playoffs against Columbus in the first leg. Where you know you you just like we're there, there's that we're shutting them down. Pull somebody somebody pull his mic. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most. This is what happens in in New York sports. Is you're you're only judged by by your last performance, and it's something that in in New York soccer in particular, 
Uh, they're given a, players are given a lot of leeway because of what they did somewhere else. Where in other sports, like let's say, for instance, God willing, LeBron James comes to the Knicks. If he has one bad game, you the, the New York Post will murder that man. And I think that the same level of scrutiny should – maybe not. But, like, the same level should be at least presented when it comes to the players in the soccer pitch. Gotcha. All right, listen, let's let's get back to the task at hand. <laughs> David Villa gets the due to the match for uh, for episode 104. It's clear, okay? Uh, Lauren, if you're in this broadcast, put it on the Google Doc. David Villa, David Villa day, a David Villa brace, a David Villa win. That was good. David Villa, of course, of course. Um, so, all right, let's let's move on to the. Uh, to the topic. sobering news, <laughs> um, I I know Anthony's been like salivating at what like at this news, and I cannot wait to hear what you have to think. There's some serious talks, uh, and there there are even more than talks now. Allegedly, some Nice representatives were here in New York trying to finalize things. Patrick Vieira's potential move to League on side, Nice. Go. Yeah, <laughs> just go. <laughs> uh, this is um, this is uh, okay. League on and MLS. If you think about them next to each other as leagues, I aside from PSG and Monaco, I I, w- I would honestly say that. So many of those other teams are so irrelevant in in world soccer but that you might as well be here. What, what was that? But Balotelli. I'm surprised. Do you know that I was surprised to see that he's still not 30 years old? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't well, mean to interrupt, but you said Nice years. wasn't relevant. Yeah. I'm just, just – go ahead. I'm sorry. Continue. My fault. I didn't mean to interrupt. But like, you know, he's if, – like if, if Arsenal would have come calling, it would have stunk, but I would have understood it. You know, like you can't turn down a team of that caliber. But Nice, <laughs> a, a, a team that's not going to play in European Cup competition next year, a team that is meh and has literally since I've been watching soccer since ninety ninety four ninety five, Nice has been one of those teams that I didn't even discover until like two thousand and three. So it's. It's it's one of those things like do you want to go to Europe that badly and if so, what's wrong with this place? What is wrong with city? What's wrong with MLS? And what is wrong with playing in New York City? And that's the big sticking point. This is New York City. This is a place where you can become a superstar in any sport, but for some reason in soccer or at least in major league soccer, because it did with the Cosmos in the 70s. You are not a superstar here. You're just a regular person. And superstars from overseas have been embracing that, unfortunately. Uh, so you're left with this kind of like, so are we a minor league? Is that what this is? Is is this, um you know, Jack Harrison goes off, makes one appearance from Middlesbrough, and it's just like, okay, um, so that – so that's he just got called up over there, and he'd rather sit on the bench for Middlesbrough than play games here in New York City. I understand that they're playing on a baseball stadium, but geez, at least you're seeing minutes. At least you're competing for for a cup. Like if he goes in the middle of the season, not only is that a really does that say a lot about this league right now, but it also says a lot about what people think of MLS and NYCFC in the grand scheme of sports in New York City, and in the United States. And that's a horrible thing. Aside from the fact that it's an insult to leave a team in the middle of the season when they look like they could be a championship contender. For Nice. Nice! <laughs> For nice. You know what? Maybe, listen, it could, you could, I've seen it floated out there. Perhaps Arsenal said, hey, look, you were an option, but you need some European experience at a, at a, club level not a not a on not a uh, academy level you need some real european experience so if you can find something hey you know take it and and grow that way i could see that um i could see him wanting to go home um i mean he is french so that you're always more at home where you're from obviously 
But I, I think what, what – is it good for him? Absolutely. I'm sure it's it's great for him. What is that going to do to this club season? Right. Is it – are these players brought in by him – to play this system and only this system? Are you going to bring in a coach that's going to play this system? If not, can these players adapt to another system mid-season and still compete for a cup? And still make a that's cup run, That's my sure. issue. That's my issue, what it comes down to. If this team, I, I am, if he's going to go and we're going to bring somebody in that's going to change things up and we're going to play a different style of soccer, that's fine. But A, do we have the personnel to do so? And B, is it going to be fast enough where we're not wasting six games trying to figure out what the hell's going on? Well, I think, I think, dude, remember, we, his coaching staff, we've proven that we can win games uh, with his coaching staff. Two. That's a second yawn, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Am I not effing boring? Anyway, <laughs> like, it's only when I'm talking. It's, <laughs> it's only me. I'm sorry. It's only me. <laughs> I'm trying. No, but dude, like really remember, you him. got you got Christian Latanzio that's taken over for Patrick when Patrick's been suspended, right? You've got Javier Perez who can play the same style. I think we have the coaching staff. I'm I'm thinking in terms of getting us through the 2018 season. I think we have the coaching staff within our system that know uh, that know of PV's setup better than, you know, as well, if not better than PV himself, right? So I think, yes, the, the bigger question is, do you bring in a coach that's completely different to completely t turn things around? I think that would be actually more detrimental than letting somebody like Christian Latanzio pick up the slack and, and run the team for the rest of the year. What do you think? Yeah, about no, that that's, that's fine. But I mean, what do you do with all these guys you brought in? And how many of these guys are going to be serviceable next year that still have contracts? But, dude, look at our at lineup year to year with the changes that happen. It's not, you know, like – Yeah, but it depends on how long these guys are signed for. If these guys are signed on for two years and all of a sudden three-quarters of them are useless because they don't fit into a new system or they can't play positions that they're, you know, they're, they're penned for – uh, you know, you got to worry about that too. So it's is it it's worrisome. Are are you going to pick the same kind of coaches year after year because you like that philosophy, or are you going to give people a little bit of freedom to show you different looks and see how different things go? Like right now, we've only seen this out of the back. You know, mainly four guys push the ball up the field back when it's necessary, and then try to move forward. Do you want to see someone who could bring a different spin on that? Do you want to see somebody that's more offensive minded or maybe more not so much holding and maybe not so much possession, maybe a counterattacking team, maybe you build up the defense. It, it's a, it's a question where is that if he leaves now and you keep the same staff, that's, that's fine. I do think they can get through, but when it comes down to next season or, or playoffs, are you going to have enough juice? Are you going to have the right pieces in place in order to move forward? Or are we starting back from square one again? Oh, no, listen, don't get me wrong. I think uh, losing losing Patrick Vieira midseason is – you're going to feel it in one way or another, right? I think the bigger question is what happens next year. And, again, that all remains to be seen. He's still our head coach right now, so it's really hard to speculate on that. I think there's the bigger question is is what, what are going to be the short-term effects on NYCFC and why – is Patrick leaving for Nice? Well, that well, that's the big question. The big question is why are you leaving? The 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 whole thing and 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 you know this isn't exclusive to NYCFC. The Red Bulls are having the exact same discussion sure. right now. Sure. Why are you so openly interested in leaving when in interviews all both coaches talk about is this system that they've been putting? It's a project. So then why are both of them abandoning it. Yeah. Like what's like they, and, and I think that it's, it's a very fair question to ask of them to ask Patrick Vieira. Okay. Why are you leaving it now? You haven't won anything. Um, so what's the deal? Is it like, and, and be honest, is it money? Cause if it is more power to you, God bless. You can go, you can go do whatever you want to do, but to, to keep saying, as he said all along, I'm here and I'm, and I believe in this system. If you're negotiating with another team, you don't believe in what you're in, in the system because you're looking to get out. And that's just the honest truth of it. Yeah. Um, here's a question from Jorge. And this one 
right for you, Anthony. Could Claudio oh Reyna coach the team? I'm going to just lob that one into you. Oh, boy. Well, this is – I don't know if we were going to talk about this, but Claudio Reyna has interviewed for the U.S. men's national team general manager position. Uh, and at the last time – it's been a few weeks, but the last time they mentioned it, it was him and Kurt Anolfo that seemed to be the two guys that they were looking at the most. So we may be seeing a lot more of people than, than just Vieira. But if he does stay, I think it would be a great idea to see what Claudio Reyna can do uh, behind the bench. I think that he's well knowledgeable in MLS, played in it, knows a lot about the U.S. men's national team, knows a lot about the young players to be able to get it done. But the real question is, is he out the door too? Yeah, that's and that's why I, want, I needed to put that question out there for you for sure. Yeah. Um, Eric is saying, I feel very betrayed by him and just want him to leave if he's going to treat us like this. It's not you, it's me. Um, Daniel is saying, let's be real. It's crazy to think a coach doesn't want to go to a team in Europe, in a European league rather than stay in MLS, but it's, well, let's, yeah, no, no, no. Let's be real. This is New York city, right? If you don't want to be here, I don't know. I, 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 I can't tell you that I, I can't see every other sport that exists in this city. You want to succeed here no matter how bad the team is that you're coaching. Hold on a if second. You, hold on, hold on. Yeah. You, the New York City point is valid. The city football group is even more valid. Don't you want to stay within that organization? Like there's talk, there's, you know, people talking about him eventually getting Pep's job. Like, dude, yeah. stay in the organization. Win some silverware and prove your worth so that way when the coach at City steps down, this is a natural fit. You started with the developmental team. You moved over to our team over in MLS. You dominated with them. You created a winning organization. Now you're ready to take on a real European squad, not Nice. Yeah. Well, if, and, and also, to, and, 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 you know, to be fair about the whole Europe thing, like Europe ain't as fancy as everybody likes to think that it is. You, you've got your big teams. You've got Paris. You've got London. You've, you, you've got Manchester. You've got Real Madrid. All these kind of that, – that, that's amazing. Go try to find a Hetafe game and let me know if you think that's fancier than, than what we're doing here, okay? Like, so it's. I'm the it's, only one that watches. <laughs> Am I the. Did you, do you even know that Espanol plays in Barcelona? <laughs> no. No, no. Exactly. No, no. So what does it matter if you go, if you go manage that team in Europe? It doesn't matter. This is New York City. This city by itself is a big deal, and it was enough of a big deal in the 70s for the New York Cosmos, which means it should be enough of a deal right now for NYCFC in Yankee Stadium. Oh, I think that's it. I think uh, you, you hope to see him stay. If he's going to go, he's going to go. There's not much we can really do about it. Unless, dude, when you stopped him out of his car, did he seem <laughs> like he was going to stay? Because I didn't he see was, him after the game. <laughs> So I actually uh, I have a I have a France '98 World Cup kit and I've been dying to get it signed and it's it's Patrick Vieira jersey so it, it's awesome and the news hit last week and I was like crap I need to get this thing signed ASAP so I dragged my dad with me three and a half hours early to get to the gate and as he's dropping me off Patrick's getting out of a cab and I book it and for me to run is <laughs> impressive so i run down the street and i pull out the jersey out of my backpack and i'm like coach coach and he's on his phone speaking french and now i kind of wish i spoke <laughs> french because maybe he's like yeah yeah i'll be wednesday we'll sign the contract it's fine you yeah. know probably what it was but um i mean he managed to sign it for me really great um but uh, again uh, it's a guy that seems like he's mentally here for right now what goes on behind closed doors is good, I guess, as any of the three of us are going to make or anybody listening is going to make. Um, if it's a foregone conclusion that he's leaving, I'd like to know that you have some sort of plan in place for the current people you have returning on your roster, who you're planning on getting rid of, and how you plan on making it work. Are you going to bring somebody back that's the same? Are you going to bring a bigger name in? Are you going to try to fish – you know, somebody from Europe to come over here and do it. Uh, uh, it, it really depends on, on, on what goes on. I don't blame him for going. Again, I can see a job opportunity bigger than this if it's money-wise. Like you said, more power to you. 
But for me, I, I think New York, for us, just because we've lived here so long and we've seen it, we've seen the winning and what it brings along with it, I don't think people from Europe necessarily see it the same way. Sure. They they see New York as a big city. They they don't necessarily know the history. They don't know about the, you know the Yankees. They don't know about the Knicks, the the Giants, the Rangers. They they just don't know. And if they knew, they would understand how big it was to win here. Which is why I'm surprised at why not other you know big stars try to come and conquer. Um, if you've won championships everywhere else, why not come here and try to be the they savior do, to a, a Knicks they team do or come, a Rangers team? They do team. come here. But they go to the galaxy and start slapping players around and drawing red cards. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> also, I'm just going to say, there is a guy who doesn't have a job right now who's quite a big coach that I would like to see take his job. Is so, his name Claudio Ranieri? I didn't even think about him, but you're, that, that, that is one. <laughs> I was thinking more Carlo Ancelotti. Uh, uh, yeah, because <laughs> Mancini got the Italy job, so... Listen, you bring in names like that, you're going to put a couple people, extra people in the stands, and you're putting people in in charge who, who know, who have been there, who have several trophies under their belt. Ancelotti's got a lot of silverware under his belt, and he knows. And, I mean, it's not like it's a language thing. He speaks four different languages. It's incredible. Yeah, no, um, for sure. So Listen, it, I, think, I think this pretty much sums up the conversation here about the Patrick Vieira move over to Nice. And it's from Jorge. They don't have chicken buckets in Nice. <laughs> oh, they have baguette. They have baguette baskets. <laughs> baguette basket. <laughs> I gotta buy this Escar- old name. Escargot yeah. baskets. Oh, ooh. gotta <laughs> buy that name. Absolutely have to buy that name. Anyway, listen. It's it would suck to see him go, but you know, nevertheless, it's. It, it may it may be happening sooner than we'd like to think it will. Um, we'll have to just we'll have to just see what happens, um, guys. We're, we're uh, running out of time, but I, I want I do want to touch on one last thing if we can. Red Bulls uh, played against uh, Atlanta in Atlanta last night, and um, number one, it was a hell of a game. The game literally had everything. It had goals. It had goals taken away. It had red cards. It had red cards taken away. It had a pitch invader. It had absolutely everything. It also had Kamar Lawrence sustaining a pretty bad injury uh, while he was attempting to clear a ball, and we just wish him a really, a really fast recovery. Hope he's doing okay. When you see a player out cold like that for ten minutes, that's that's pretty scary. I don't care. I don't care who your rivals are. Um, and, uh, just an update on that. Um, he was released from the hospital today and flew back. Um, they just kept him precautionary, okay. so he is fine and flew back with one of the athletic coaches. Okay, so we don't, but we don't know what kind of injury he sustained or anything. Not, not necessarily just yet. Um, but it doesn't appear like it's going to be too long term. He might miss next week, but you know, yeah. That's good. I mean, listen, that that's that's scary, man. You see that? You see that kind of stuff? I don't care who the team is. When you stop a game like that for ten minutes and the player's being carried off in a stretcher and he's he's not moving, he's barely talking. That's scary. So we hope a, a very speedy recovery for him for sure. But that was a f- hell of a freaking game, though. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely an exciting game. And uh, they they both those teams drew the blueprint. Um, they they play a very similar style, and you have to be ready from the first whistle for that punch in the mouth that both teams try to do. Um, they were Hagler Hearns. They just they went toe to toe and and they did that. And you you got to be ready to either shut that down from the first whistle or be ready to throw as hard as they throw at you. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely, definitely absolutely. exciting. A lot of exciting matchups going on. So uh, anyway, we got NYCFC taking on Houston Dynamo in Houston Friday night. Uh, hoping they're going to come back with the three points. We need to break this win loss win loss kind of. Uh, kind of streak here we need we need to pick up a second win straight which would be fantastic three points on the road against a western conference side would be fantastic obviously um do you think same lineup for uh houston or do we go back to four in the back gotta go four in the back you, there's no way they're going to be able to keep uh, some of those some of those guys uh in houston at bay especially with the balls over the top um you're just going to be left out to dry yeah, so adjusting tactically from uh, from match to match for sure. Um, Jorge is saying they are not a pushover, and that's 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 valid. Is there valid point? Uh, hey, Anthony, where can people follow you? Because 
you should tell them. <laughs> yeah, I, I changed my uh, Twitter handle because I'm going to be soon to be covering a lot more sports than just soccer. So I'm at NYC Sports World. Get ready because there is a uh, baseball and a few pro wrestling podcasts coming your way. Whoa, those two. Th- nice. One of these things is not like the other. Um, <laughs> but hey, SmackDown is blue. That's, <laughs> that's true. Oh, Eric is saying much wider pitch. You definitely need the four. I think just because I think just because of who we're playing, you need the four. But yeah, that that's a that's a good point as well. Um, Jorge saying we barely tied with them last year in Connecticut. Yeah, that was. That was a lot of things happening in that game, but uh, we don't need to remember that. <laughs> I, I didn't even go. There was no way I was driving two and a half hours to watch that. It was just not going to happen. Anyway, that being said, let's hope they uh, come back with three points. It's it's uh, guys. If you haven't read Anthony's stuff on dudesandblue.com, go check it out. We've got match previews, match recaps, editorial pieces. I asked him if he could put together a piece about Tommy McNamara, and he did it with, like, like super quick, and it was awesome. I couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, if you guys have been checking out his articles, thank you. And if you haven't, please go check him out, dudesinblue.com. All of this stuff is right there. And you can follow him at uh, NYC Sports World on the Twitterverse. Dude, you got anything else before we sign off? I motion that we we change – some queen lyrics. We take Bohemian Rhapsody and instead of Mamma Mia, Mamma Mia, we put in David Villa, David Villa. <laughs> That's been stewing for like six minutes straight. That's been stewing for about 42 minutes straight. <laughs> Just waiting. Wow. The only reason why is I'm, I'm reading it backwards. I'm reading it backwards. David Villa, David Villa. I'm like, yes! Yes! That's what we need! Wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. Jorge is giving a thumbs up and says nice, but it looks like he's giving a thumbs up to Nice. Not cool, man. <laughs> Patrick Vieira makes the naughty list for going to Nice. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that should be your article, uh, Anthony, if, if you haven't wrote, written a piece about it yet. Naughty or it Nice. Itself. <laughs> it writes itself. And that's where we'll end it. That's, that's a really good uh, – that's really a really good place to stop. Guys, thanks so much for joining us for episode 104 of Dudes of Blue. Thanks to Anthony Merced for spending some time with us and for all the kick-ass content that you're putting on dudesandblue.com. We really appreciate it. Um, check them out for sure. Uh, get, make sure to give us the follow Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We're at Dudes in Blue. It's really easy to uh, to find us there. Smash the like button one more time for us on Facebook and share this with your friends if you've got NYCFC fans. Pound that like button and your reviews on iTunes and Facebook are always really, really important, and we thank you for those as well. But uh, we'll be right back here next Monday night, 8 p.m., same time, same place. Maybe I'll have some stuff on the walls. I don't know. I I really don't know. I'm just going to leave it white. <laughs> but, uh, again, Anthony, thanks so much for joining us. Dude, I will see you probably tomorrow. And uh, <laughs> until next Monday night, guys, stay blue. Stay blue.